NGD internationals turn to ban. Tong Fu's turn to ban. Okay, hello everybody and welcome LGD back to the Cena Cup. This is our second season and this is a best of one, our final game of the evening. It's a lower bracket match between Tong Fu and LGD Int. So it's do or die for these two teams. You lose, you're knocked out of the competition, you win. You advance to play against LGD, China, uh, against LGD China, so sounds like a pretty tough spot, Five uh, no, seconds no matter remaining. which way you slice it. But guys, I'm basically here providing coverage on behalf of Beyond the Summit, and it's my pleasure to welcome Reserve back to the broadcast, time. Winter. So Winter, how's it going? Tom Winter? Fu's turn to ban. Have you muted yourself? Are you here? Okay, looks like I have lost Winter. For a moment, so hopefully he'll be back uh, in just a sec. Unfortunately for LGD Int, it is another day, another stand-in. Uh, they are still playing remaining. without PyCat at the moment. I believe they had Miracle standing in the other day. Five uh, they had remaining. CTY recently, and now they have IC. So LGD and having a pretty rough Tom time right now without their pick. without their solo mid. And I just I'm keeping an ear out for Winter. Hopefully he'll be back Tom fairly Fu's soon. Turn we've to got. Pick. Clockwork and Venomancer is the bans for LGD Int. Tongfu are going to be getting rid of an Elder Titan and a Timber Saw. LGD Int open up with the first pick Alchemist. Previously, I would have said that this could have been played mid by PyCat uh, or could be support for Freedom. I think it's actually one of his favorite support heroes, but I'm thinking maybe just the support Alk uh, for Freedom this time around. And Tongfu, they're known for being LGD a little bit cheesy from time to time, are just going to be picking up the Visage and the Pugna. Okay, so I'll Winter will probably just message me when he gets back, and we can we can keep on going here. So LGD and the pug is on the table. It's a best of one. If you can survive the cheese, then you can definitely win this game. The question is how you deal with the pug. It's already really restrictive as far as your draft is concerned. A whole bunch of heroes are immediately off the table. You don't want your high cast. You don't want anyone with a high casting Five cost whatsoever. Remaining. You start to think a little bit about, okay, do we take the Naga Siren? Do we song out? Reserve uh, time. And then do we bring down the, the Nether Ward? But I'm not a huge fan of the tactic, honestly, because the Pugna could end the game at a point where your Naga Siren still only has LGD one point in song. Internationals but looks like I've got Winter bad. back. So, Winter, give me your thoughts on this kind of cheesy Tongfu lineup so far. Uh, I, I feel that the, the Pugna is a really good pickup for situations of best of one. You, you put the opponent on a lot Ten of pressure, seconds, like they wonder remember. what you're going to try and do with, with the Pugna. Early game pressure, necro books, necro books on everyone. And LGD Tom immediately Fu needs to think of to whatever defensive options they can have to deal with the early game push. Or P Tong Fu can still just use Pugna as just one of their cores and doesn't really have to push really early. They can just use the fact that Pugna is really good in team fights. Like you said, the, the netherworld is really strong Ten and seconds, doesn't remember. really have to go too, uh, too uh, aggressive in the early game with the Pope now. Turn to yeah. ban. And I guess the thing for LGD now, you're in sort of full... Just because of the Pugna, you're kind of in full crisis management mode. They've already banned out the Lone Druid, but if Tong Fu wants... So I think the big things right now to think about here are DK and Chen. Tong if Fu's Tong Fu get to rid ban. of, say, Bounty Hunter here, then I feel that they can almost take the Chen with relative impunity. I mean, maybe LGD Int can put together a really nice aggressive tri lane, but they've already got an Alchemist and a Rubik, so I don't even know if aggressively tri laning remaining. into a duo lane with a Visage is, is going to get you anywhere. Five what do you seconds think? Remaining. Yeah, they, they, managed to, they managed to use one of the bans on Gyrocopter as well, so it probably means that yeah, they ban out another Tong team fight. Fu's turn team fight to pick. This tells uh, a lot, like Tong Fu wants to take early game control without allowing LGD in having any sort of carry that's going to be excelling at dealing at fighting early. So Tong Fu will probably just go for a really strong early game push. They have already Pugna and Visage as their first two pickups. A lot of pushing po potential in these two heroes. Yeah. For LGD into this way you start considering, say, your Darkseer and your Windrunner, heroes that can farm A, a yeah. fast mech for teamfights, and B, can counter Defend. push fairly well, yeah. well as well. And they can defend as well. So Reserve time. having the Alchemist and Rubik is already two really good options to defend your towers, Acid and the Fate Boat. They probably want something along the lines of another range hero that can spam from far. Like Green Runner comes to my mind. The first hero that comes to my mind is like Green Runner to do that job. Wow. And this is this is all push, push all the time 
from Tongford. They go for the Vengeful Spirits, so they've got some good auras so far. Um, we could even maybe see a core Vengeful Spirit. I haven't seen one in ages. I think the last time I saw it was Havost running it as a farmer in an aggressive tri-lane, but it, it is was kind like, of a thing. It was like the TI, uh, the TI3 the finals, one of yeah, the, the first yeah. game. Ten seconds. Yeah, I, I remember accusing Navi of, of throwing that game, but anyway, so may, maybe not the, the most remaining. reliable strategy, but Tongfu, whatever they're, whatever they're going for here, it's got a lot of pushing power. Reserve time. Um, and I'm, they've still got I'm plenty of ways to round this out yeah. as well. I'm looking at whatever options the they have. Uh, to run up the carries to of Tongfu because Lone Druid, Dragonite, obviously are the two best pushing heroes to complement the pushing lineup. And they are sort of really good later in the game too. Like you can fall back on them if your push doesn't make make, make it in the early early game. So what do you think is left? I'm trying to look at the hero pool, whatever that comes to my line now. No. Are, are you surprised at all not to see the Chen? I mean, I think it's... That SMJ I plays it really me. well and I think it also... It also, I think it also fits pretty well here. It's dif Five it's difficult to go remaining. for the Chen, like having Chen and Visage. They probably didn't want to go for that because like you have two Reserve supports time. that don't have a reliable stun early on. That could cost you. It's really greedy in the sense that they are both really strong supports to push uh mm -hmm. to fit into a pushing lineup. So you can if you get away with it, it's really good. But if you don't, it's gonna be a huge handicap for your team having two supports that don't have a stun. Okay, so let me let me try this one at you, at you into how about say Death Prophet or Rasta or Shadow Shaman. I, I like the Death Prophet more. Yeah, I think we, we've had yeah. this conversation before, and you've always lent towards the you've always lent towards I, the Death I, Prophet. I don't really like like Rasta because he's just a slow hero. I generally don't like slow heroes. <laughs> it's all about the move speed, is it, Winter? Is this why? You... Man, you, you run slow, you die. People chase you down, people yeah. kill you, you can't escape. And you can't chase people. Same <laughs> same thing. So so th this is the secret. Just ban out the fast heroes when you're playing against Winter and he'll have a have a terrible time. Hey, I guess look, you would... Look at, yeah. look at the heroes uh, that escape. That turn to Elder pick. Titan, 315 movement speed. Gyrocopter, 315 movement speed. Luna, 320, 325 movement speed. So... That tells the story. That, that, that tells it all. I guess you were a big fan of the, the Tranquil Boots buff then, right? Winter has been speeding around on Crystal Maiden for the last couple of I am couple actually weeks. not a big fan of the Tranquil Boots buff, but I sort of like it as a support. The bigger fan I am of the new buff is the SNY from 12% to 16%. Ah. So Five keep an eye out. But, so Tongfu, this is just more push. They go for the, the track. So somebody is getting... Somebody's getting Reserve a promotion. Time. They could run an aggressive tri lane. Core, it's going to be a coreless rock like for yeah. Orange likes to play it before. They are the only, we are Orange, we were like, oh, the only team using Lash Rock as a core back then in TI2, and everyone was like, why is this team doing that? Like, Lash Rock is a great support, and people are criticizing us a lot. He's but a really good Lash, core hero as well. Yeah, Lash Rock is a really good core to push, like, to control the early game. You, you win your lane with your dominance of spell damage early on and Tom after you win the lane you have ban. diabolic edict to take down towers to further extend your lead by controlling the map so it's generally a really good snowballing hero is this viper from lgd and just trying to stop tongfu running an aggro try i mean they could go visage ventral spirit the track aggro try Pugna is one of their solos and still have somebody for the yeah. other Five solo lane the, the, the viper that, that they pick first thing comes to my mind means that they want to fight because Viper is going to be tanking a lot of the spell damage with his Corrosive skin. Like, getting an early mech, he's going to be really, really tanky against all the spell damage here. Mm. So, Viper is going to be their front line. Means that Rubik, Alchemist, will most likely be the backline support and stuns. Nature's Prophet is going to be split pushing before joining the fights as late as possible after every stun and every spell has come, come out and he casts his ultimate TP scene to clean up. LGD so the last possible hero for LGD is ban. what they are missing right now is an engaging hero. Yeah, they don't. They lack an initiator at the moment is the is the big thing. Yeah. Uh, one thing that's worth I, talking I like, about, I guess... Oh, no, go. I like the Kunkka ban. The Kunkka is actually a really good engaging hero and solo mid hero for LGD International and it's also a really good hero to fight Oh, there goes the Death Prophet ban. Tom Dang. Turn to pick. So, no Death no. Prophet this time. Maybe Necrolite? It's also pretty cheesy. I don't know. Uh, Bristleback? Maybe. Yeah, Bristleback seems more legit here. They have a safe... They can safe lane the last rock. Bristleback off lane, Pugna solo mid. 
Yeah. Yeah. And Pugna doesn't actually lose mid to Viper that hard. Viper just can't deal with the push at all. So Pugna just sits back, keeps blasting the wave, collects all the runes, and I, I think he's actually Viper okay. Still, still do, does reason me well yeah, against yeah, Pugna. He, he, can, he can still beat Pugna. Like, I feel that the matchup is actually will go both ways. Whoever plays Reserve the lane battle time. will be able to beat each other. Remaining. But like you said, Pugna is going to be able to control LGD the runes more. There goes the pistol back. Turn to pick. This is so cheesy from, from Tongfu. I mean, I, I, I hate... I hate using the word cheesy because it has these negative connotations, but Tongfu is just like, look, we have a whole bunch of heroes that are really powerful yeah, 15 cheesy minutes is, into the game. Let's go. Cheesy like, is more like a StarCraft tool. Yeah, like, exactly. You go for a bunker in the enemy base right up on the start, that's something cheesy. Yeah, you know, proxy, proxy pylon all in, kind of. <laughs> yeah, but they went for LGD Black playing the Invoker. What? Hmm. Um, it's... Oh, Pycat is not here, yeah. No, I yeah, Pycat's Pike, Pike not here. I was, oh, as I was saying during the draft, it's it's another day, another stand-in for LGD. And they still Prepare don't have Pycat. They've got Icy this time around. I think the last game that they played, they had CTY, and we cast that one. And then the game before have, that, they had have, have they Have they tried everyone already? <laughs> I, I don't know. I guess they're just, they're just cycling through at this point. But like you pointed out, there are definitely communication issues with... Wait, I don't think this guy speaks English. Yeah, I, I don't think so either. Oh, oh well. <laughs> oh well. Okay. He's, he's on the Viper, it's, it's fine. You know, there's, yeah, there's you only so many spells to coordinate. You just need to right click and you don't have to cast anything first. So, on the Radiant side, we have uh, IC as a send in for LGD International. Misery on the Alchemist. Freedom on the Rubik. We have Black playing the Solo Mid Invoker, starting with Annals. And we have Brax on the Offlane as a Prophet. Yeah, and very quickly for Tong Fu, they're looking for a first blood. We've got the SMJ on the Vengeful Spirit. XTT is your Bristleback. Mu is your Pugna. Sanshung is your Visage. And Zhou is going to be your Farming List Track. And they are putting together an aggro try right now. This is just very familiar. Like, we used to do this a lot. <laughs> Let's track aggro try with a stunning support and a Visage. You got stun into a stun into a Soul Assumption. Nobody survives that. There's a melee support bottom. The alchemist. They, so he's got they, they nothing to, to do they here. Been, they can't fight this. Also, the I don't think the invoker is in for a particularly great time, and even nature's prophet one v one against bristleback. I think this is also great. For I was Tom actually Fu. quite surprised that black opted to go for the exot. Like they're trying to defend against a push, dude. Like having crossback is better at defending, but exot is always the better carry build, and black is a carry player. I wouldn't even be surprised to see him still go for Midas in this game, despite uh, how quickly you, Tongfu are going to try yeah, and end If you the game. go for Exalt build, if you don't go Midas, it's a mistake. So here comes the first smoke gang. Misery rotated in with a smoke. Yeah, Mu stunned under the tower. Freedom still got a lift. Black can't do anything here, and Freedom oh. not actually able to get in range for the lift. Did he go for an auto attack instead? Yeah, he went for auto attack, but it was also difficult. They might not get the kill. Uh, Black wasn't trying to attack as soon as he saw the Alchemist running in. There was like a miscommunication Short with his teammates. He didn't, he didn't run up as soon as the Alchemist went in. Like, he ran up as soon as the Alchemist was already throwing oh, his stun. So he the and Sunshine, lot, they yeah. walk straight into Freedom. They get the stun out. There is a concoction being charged up by Misery. Freedom jukes into the trees. He gets around Misery, oh, yeah. throws the stun out. There's still only a lift from Freedom and auto attack. Sanshang turns towards him. This is a really awkward level 1 support battle. And it's just going to be a couple of spells thrown uh, out. Moo oh. comes all the way in looking for misery. He don't, knows that the invoker can punish Don't you dare say support battle. The solo has come in too. Yeah, there, there we go. So Moo's, Moo's on the scene, <laughs> but he doesn't really change the outcome too much. Bottom lane, they're going to rotate in. Probably get the Rubik here. Yes, done up Freedom. They still need to charge up some soul assumption here. And Freedom's not helping them at all. He's not even auto attacking. Soul assumption comes Quality. in. He survives on 18 Almost hit died. points. And is going to be able to pop this out. They really need all three heroes just to jump on someone. I mean, even this level one Viper is not very tanky. I think if you just stun, stun, soul assumption. Yeah, it, it's actually died. in that in that particular situation, I would have preferred to have Grave Chill instead of like the soul assumption. Yeah. Because they were like hitting at him like all the time, and yeah, and you get the attack speed well. as well, so y yeah. you actually get more auto attacks out. Anyway, yeah, but they mostly just get Soul Assumption, all the Chinese teams. So I'm not sure if anyone, any one of their supports get Grave Chill, apart from the Western supports on Visage. Yeah. I mean, I think, if, I think it's alright if you're walking into the lane with the expectation of going, okay, stun the guy, 
stun him again. Yeah, stun, and then stun. Have burst. Yeah. Stun, stun, nuke. First blood. Yeah. But that was not the case. So. Uh, Black eats two blasts back to back on mid lane. He doesn't even have a point in Quaz yet. He's got two exhort and invoke. So this this tango I, is all that he has left in the world. I, I told you he's a farming player. He's obviously gonna go for the build that enables him to last it easily. He doesn't even have he doesn't even have a bottle or anything. He's just bringing out boots. So this boots this one point in Quaz has can. to has to do a lot for him. Yeah, that's the, like the situation where attack. I felt that if he went for the Quas Rex, it's going to be a, a very easy to deal with the Harris from the partner, but at the same time, he wants oh, to be initiation. able to initiation. Bottom lane looks like Zhou's actually going to be the first one to drop. San Shang trying to run oh, as well, and the Sunstrike's coming in! LGD in! Pick up the first blood and another kill. They are the ones who actually won the tri lane against the Visage. Well, that was totally unexpected. I didn't catch what... How the fight started and was it a bad positioning by the last rock? Yeah, I mean it must have just been bad position into a concoction because they they didn't combo anybody. So LGD and in. They, things are and they good. definitely had the upper hand in the in the matchup of three versus three with the Visage. So LGD International must have gained some sort of positional advantage over Tongfu to have gotten that first blood. Yeah, and it's not even like you can you can say, oh look, I didn't know where the alchemist was. There's a dire ward spotting everything west of these trees. So somebody must have gotten in a bad position, realized it, and then just uh, not Rubik been able to escape. Got a double damage. Uh, Freedom has the DDs, fighting move, there's another blast, gets the lift, but he lifts oh, him up onto the cliff, into the stun, oh, can they finish him with the double damage? They do. He actually was just able to survive that last before he got hit one more time. The stun was able to come in on time. Yeah, I, I, w I thought, why would you lift him up into vision? He's just gonna right click you and you die, but we had Misery right there, waiting in the wings. The that was just chemistry nice by the two sons. Oh, XTT. XTT is going on the. Diving in on Brax, he needs another shot. The oh, Sunstrike oh, comes in! Brax survives! Oh, LGD in 4 0 oh, so far. I'm counting the Sunstrikes, okay? I'll keep you posted. So we're, we're, two, we're two for two so far, right? Yeah. <laughs> This is I'm, this is not going at all as Tongfu expected. I think things are I'm still going to be all right I'm mid game. Gonna, I'm not going to yeah. doubt. I'm not going to doubt the Exot good anymore. <laughs> no, this is paid for itself. Freedom's just going to jump into some neutrals and, and die there. Yeah, he he spent all his money and he just he's just going to get a free trip back to the fountain. So Black is going to have like his Midas really really quickly. He is two kills now, thousand two hundred gold. He's going to have his Midas at a really good time this game. Yeah, and. At this point for Tongfu, are you worried or do you still think that, okay, look, 15 minutes, Bristleback, Pugna, Mech somewhere, we're probably still going to be okay in, in team fights? They're still having a lot of last hits on the Pugna and the Bristleback. I think they shouldn't be too worried. Like, they have to wait for the Bristleback and Pugna to get more levels before they can do stuff for the team, but they're going to smoke. Well, the Leshrac's not, the not smoked. Oh, they, they see the Leshrac alone, so they think that, okay, this is. This is a solo less rock. Concoction's coming in. Misery, can he throw it? No, he ends up stunning himself. They go the stun out onto oh, Freedom. Zhou, they stunning snap him. Everybody. The sun strike comes in. Black Pill picks up that kill. They lift up Sanshung. They get two more. They're going to clean up the Nether Ward. And Tong Fu. Things are just going worse and worse and worse. I don't know why Lashrac wasn't smoked there. The two supports were. But they're actually quite screwed here. They can't lane at bottom Radiant's anymore and they need to move around to gank. Attack. Well, I felt that maybe they tried to bait LGD. They purposely smoked the two supports and just moved the last truck around, but it was actually quite obvious that she was not alone. <laughs> yeah, so are, are we 3 for 3 now on, on Sunstrikes? I think... Yeah, 3 for 3. Yeah. That was definitely not a missed Sunstrike. Yeah, so Winter's got his tally. We've got a 6 minute Midas up for Black. Um, We've also so got some pretty good farm on the Prophet. We are counting profit. everything for back. We are counting his Midas timing. We are counting his Sun Strikes. What else is there? His kills, 3 to, three to 0. He's, he's doing very well. We can even maybe look at it as GPM. He's, he's broken 400 GPM 7 minutes into the game. So this he's is this is Black really in his element. Yeah, this is, this is, this is Black's game, I think. Uh, he's a G GPM person, like a lot of the p players that have played with him before, like they mentioned that Black is very extremely particular on his GPM, Dyer's just like Ethel and Lee, all attack. the small little details. Oh, Bottom misery! Lane. Gets the stun so, out onto the Lashrac, Izzy comes there's in, the there's an Earth Splitter, 
Gold Earth. Yeah, Split Earth goes out. Misery Ooh. taking some damage. There's still a Soul Assumption stun from ZSMJ, but I see. Keeps on throwing out the damage. Icy gets the double. Crawford ultimate bounces in. Gets the triple. Oh, Sun Strike me though. He got a solo queue on Pokemon, so it's powerful. Wow. Who is? That's why he wasn't using his Sun Strike. He was busy killing Dyer's someone on his tower attack. He's already having his double pot at eight minutes. I, I'm I'm flabbergasted. I, I don't even Dyer's know what to say anymore. Like this is just. It, you know, I, I just realized that we didn't talk about one element in the game. Like, they have Prophet and Invoker, which means their Dyer's trial is actually 5 versus 3 attack. all the time. But the yeah. Prophet didn't even rotate it even once. He just used his ulti in the last fight, that's all. Dyer's bottom tower yeah. is and like attack. you said, Tongue for like, guys, we can't lane bottom anymore. The Viper is level 7, he's almost level 8. Yeah. We've got a couple of level, we got a level 5 yes. Lashrak and two level 3 this is, supports. This is definitely not patience from Zoe, it's desperation from Zoe, <laughs> he's smoked up as a last rock. Yeah, they're they're looking for freedom, they get the stun, they destroy the tower as well, they blast him down. Okay, so Tongford are getting back into this, but... I don't think you can call this a cheese anymore. If Tongfu turned this game around, well deserved. LGD ends have a huge lead so far. Probably... Probably down to a troll from LGD, or something magnificent might have happened. I think it's been pretty magnificent so far for LGD, and so I don't know. Maybe, maybe Tongfu can impress us just as much. But looks like the answer Dyer's for them is five man. You got Arcane boots on your Pugna, XTT just has some treads, but away they're going to go. But they're going to lose their tier one tower they bot. To, they have to five man because they, like you mentioned, the other lanes Dyer's are just too strong for them to stand fallen. in the lane. They will be able to bring this down pretty quickly. Freedom comes up to grab a little bit of experience, but LGD Int, they've got the levels, they've got, you know, the heroes to be able to actually just fight a split push war right now. Yeah, so they're they staying the even in terms of tower trades. They have the mecha already on the Viper at 9 minutes against the Trilane. That's something you never want to happen at all. You did the Trilane to slow those items, but instead, it still comes out at a respectable time. Yeah, and Tongfu aren't even... I don't think they're close to theirs, so that that's a mech advantage for LGD, and, and they've got double Midas up right now, so oh, call the late game secured for them. Well, Brax actually Dyer's badly. I thought he was, was going to go attack. for the pistol back, but they just want to take Dyer's down the tower middle there. Tower has fallen. But, so LGD and have traded evenly as far attack. as towers are concerned oh, so far. Bottom lane. Is Misery going for a solo kill with the better end? Well, there's always a oh, sun strike and not, a profit ultimate. Not a solo kill. It's not a <laughs> solo kill. 3v1. Totally. Okay, that was like uh, five out of five sun strikes. Yeah. Well, maybe six. I, I think I lost count. Sorry. Um, what was it? It was, it was three, and then the solo kill mid made it four, four. And, and then the other one, this one makes it five. So it's five for five, I think. Okay, five for five. I didn't lose count. Okay. Keep, I doubt. I doubted myself. Keep. Here comes the prophet. Keep track. Show top lanes, they're gonna be a sprout from Brax, can he get it? Is able to do so, in comes Icy, he's got a Viper Strike, Show's just going for the TP, is going to be able to get out of there, but that's just sheer panic, double tap your TP, get all the way back to the fountain, and now have to run back to the, run back to lane, and Freedom's actually got Nether Blast stolen, so if LGD didn't want to do a little bit more pushing of their own, can quite easily do so at this point. Yeah, are they gonna catch on oh, no, us? and is gonna teleport out. Now the pushers attack. are being pushed at the moment. Like they are no longer able to move around on the map freely because of the constant threat on the Sunstrike and the Nature's Wrath. Those two alone would just immediately kill the, the Ventral Dyer's Spirit. It's just a really fallen. tough time for him. Good luck pushing into this Rubik. He's got rank 4 Nether Blast and rank 3 Fade Bolt. Uh, they are trying to push in, so... They might just die to the Prophet Ultimate and Sunstrike. Yeah, Prophet Ultimate just came back up. Icy still got this mech as well. First blast, thrown out. Ward Prophet placed Ultimate aggressively. Yes, Prophet Ultimate coming in. Icy, where's that Sunstrike? Okay. Manages to clean up ZSMJ on the back lines. And Sunshang brought down. Moo brought down as well. Freedom gets the lift. Four are already dead. They're done. <laughs> you can't take the tier one. I think they can't even take one tier one, attack. having those heroes. What else do you do? I... I don't know. I, I think you have to play on though, right? Like... 
If you don't play on, you just you're, you're, oh, you're yeah, out of the. It's, it's the best of one yeah, game. Yeah, you're right? out of the tournament. This is this is it. This is do or die for Tong Fu. I was thinking it's the best of three game. Nope. This is. I mean, I think that's why they were die trying to. They did what they did, right? Attack. It's a best of one. Like if we can just win from the draft because we have this really, really strong early to mid game draft, then what can go wrong? And I mean, if you look at the draft on paper, you're like, oh yeah, Tong Fu win the tri lane versus tri lane sun, for sun sure. Sunstrike can, sun can go wrong. All the soundtrack hits. Yeah, black so has that, a four staff and two point five k gold. Okay, so we're gonna be waiting for the first soundtrack miss on black. Yeah, and yeah. probably put a milestone on that. We'll, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep an eye on him. But TP out from the bottom lane. Black well, Brax is gonna be able to escape from XTT chasing him down. Tian Sheng just trying to grab his level six uh, up on top. But look at look at black. He just doesn't care. He's like, look. I'm gonna come farm your mid lane. Somebody, somebody, well, somebody they, challenged they, they me. They just, they just can't kill him. What, what can they do? They don't even have swap on the wrench, and it means that their only means of initiation is running up via smoke or in front or from the side to stun him with the wrench full stun, and he can just force stuff out and go swap. How is he gonna die? I, uh, I don't it's know how so to an answer you, Winter. Yeah, yeah obviously that's, he's. That, that, that's, yeah. that's why he's playing so greedy. They can't punish him. They can't. Yeah, and I think I really wish I you know I really wish this was like a land and we had the the stream and we could get the cutaway to the the players and what what they what they look like right now because I, I'm pretty sure Black is just like oh, grinning I, ear I, I to think, ear. I think people will be much interested to hear Toto chat, uh, the beach chat, and oh, they'll yeah. just be they'll just be back guys. I'm gonna get this 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 in minute before minute this. Yeah, Don't worry, like, I'll carry. It's I'll like carry guys, guys, my my hex is on the way. And I'm like, it's 14 minutes. It's like, yeah, Hex. Bottom lane. Bottom lane. They're gonna they're jump gonna in. Are they? This is a pretty annoying choke point to fight into. They do have their own mech now up on Moo, but he's been uh, spotted out by Brax. Is there gonna be a Prophet ultimate or a Sunstrike? No. Nope. Sunstrike. He's got a Tango. He gets out the Sunstrike. Misses. Can this be the beginning of the end for LGD Int? They forced that freedom away. The Nether Ward is still going to work. Somebody kill this darn thing. Two for one so far. XDT firing Quills off as he goes. I see. Gets stunned up a little bit. There's a snap. They bring down XCT. Stun flies in from the Alchemist onto ZSMJ. He's going to be brought down as well. Sanchain gets the great speed move speed. That's going to be another Sunstrike. Is he going to land this one? Sunstrike can. He has 300 hit points. Though. Oh, he used his Sunstrike. Where's the Sunstrike? Oh, another one missed. Dyer's back to back misses. That was just going to be, like you said, the beginning of the end of the Sunstrike hitting on Tongfu. I don't, yeah, I don't think it's the beginning of the end of the game for LGD, <laughs> but. Yeah, so Sanchek did a good job. Oh, he just career. he stood he completely still. Career has been oh. Yeah, like they know what Black likes GPM, and they are purposely giving away even more for him. What was it doing there? They were trying to buy something from the secret shop. What? Let's see who who was trying to buy something. Uh, who was to be blamed? I think XTT was trying to finish his Vanguard. Maybe. No, no one has money for items. What? No, no, no. He probably managed to buy it, and then the courier died. Maybe. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's probably yeah, Vanguard and XTT, I would guess. Can't, can't, really, can't really see what's in the courier, though. Uh, but if, it's most likely the ring. Yeah, if you if you actually click one of them Dyer's and you hit your courier hotkey, I think it will show you the inventory. But my courier hotkey is F1, which is actually one oh, of no. the fog hotkeys. So I can't do it. But maybe you can. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, I can. It's, it's a ring of health. Yeah, XTT. He's to blame. Brax Dyer's picks up the tier 2 top lane, fallen. LGD and continue this march forward. They're leading by 15k gold and 14k experience, talking for like 5 man smoke. We this gotta do it. Of the game. Yeah, Misery comes in, he's got the concoction charging up, Freedom, what's he got? Stolen's gonna eat a stun to the face, Jo, in some trouble, the Netherward's gonna do its job, Freedom brought down, but it's 2 for 1 so far, they don't even care about the Netherward, Moose being focused by Icy. Doesn't have a decrep up, gonna pop the mech just for himself. He's still got 15 stick charges as well. The familiars come in, he's gonna try and drain his way out of this, but no, Icy with the nether toxin finishes him off. Meanwhile, Misery finds XTT over in the river. Ends up being a 4 for 1. And uh, if I didn't lose my account, that was like 8 Sunstrikes hit out of 10. So 80% hit rate. Are you satisfied? That I am more than satisfied. <laughs> that was. What a game. If you had shown me the draft, I would have told you that Tong Fu win... I don't know, 8 times out of 10, 9 times out of 10, with that kind of lineup. But, 
LGDN. Just, they, they found the little openings at the start of the game, Tongfu got a little bit flustered, they couldn't win the tri -lane anymore, and then things just snowballed completely out of control. Once you you lose the first bird in a tri lane, you're supposed to win with a Visage, and the enemy has global spells with the Prophet and the Evoker. You're, not, you're never going to step foot in the tri lane ever again. Never. Yeah. So congratulations to LGD Int. I believe they're going to be advancing to face off against... Uh, and I guess I misspoke earlier. They're going to be advancing to face off against IG, uh, not LGD. So IG have actually been knocked down to the to the lower bracket, and I believe that'll be their next opponent. And that's also a best of one. We don't get to a best of three until the very end uh, of the lower bracket, I believe. So I think like the the last lower bracket game, and then the the game between the lower bracket, the the last person in the lower bracket, and the person that gets knocked down from the winner bracket final is also a best of three, but. Danger, more dangerous games uh, to come. Some people just like to live life in the edge. Danger yeah. is excitement. Yeah. So guys, that's going to wrap it up for our coverage of the Cena Cup second season for this evening. Uh, this was LGD Int versus Tongfu. Tongfu, they're going home. That's the end of their run uh, in this tournament, unfortunately. I've been Basecap here casting on behalf of Beyond the Summit. Don't forget to show your love to BTS. You can follow or subscribe if you've been enjoying what they've been doing. Uh, over the course of the last well, last couple of months, last year, however far back uh, you would like to go. Again, a reminder, guys, they should hopefully be back fairly soon. I'm just holding down the fort uh, while the BTS guys are busy finding finding a new place. Um, finding a new point. home. Yeah, finding a, finding a new home, a new place to call home. So that's going to wrap it up. My co-caster, of course, was Winter, so I'm going to pass it over to him so he can do all the regular plugs and things like that, and then we can all go and watch DreamHack. <laughs> uh, my Twitter and Facebook are all Winter Dota. I'm off to DreamHack. Awesome. See you. <laughs> yeah. No, no streams tonight. It's all DreamHack. So, thanks, guys. Oh, also, if you want to leave me any feedback, you can email me at basecapdota at gmail .com. It's been great casting, and I hope to see you tomorrow for more Cena Cup action.